98 WPG, Charlotte's plug for new hip hop and RB. No Limit Larry, the morning madhouse. Miss Jessica's in the building, Burpee's in the building, and we got guests. Yes. The Hornets are in the building. Yeah. Hornets in the building, Shout hey! Out the <laughs> Shout out to them Hornets, Bay. How y'all doing this morning? Go ahead and introduce yourself to the people so that they know. Okay, uh, my, my, my name is Mitch Kupchak. I'm the new general manager for the Charlotte Hornets. And I've been here about five months now, and I'm excited. It was, training camp starts next week. We're ready to go. Mm. Mitch Kupchak, what should, be, what, should, what should we be looking forward to with this new look for the Hornets for this upcoming season? Well, a lot of what we looked like last year on the court in terms of the players will be the same. And, you know, for example, Kemba Walker, he, he's our star player. He's our all-star. Mm -hmm. And he's the guy that's going to get us over the hump. And obviously he's back. And a lot of the other names uh, that were on the court will be familiar uh, to the, view, uh, the listening audience as well. Uh, we did make a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. We changed um, our coaching staff, so you'll see a different style of play. I think we had a good draft. Uh, where we picked up two young players and Miles Bridges from Michigan State and Devontae Graham uh, from Kansas, who's also local from Raleigh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we made a couple of trades. Um, you know, I think we'll improve our team. And I think the biggest difference you'll see is, um, you know, obviously, hopefully, we're going to win games, mm -hmm. more games than we won last year. But I think style of play. Uh, it'll be up-tempo, high pace. Um, a lot of the way uh, the game is played today, mm -hmm. in terms of threes, layups, free throws, uh, switching defense, you know, get the ball out of the basket, go off the court quick, you know, back and forth, you know, a fun, exciting uh, way to play basketball. I think that'll be the biggest difference. All right, uh, Mitch, how do you feel we need to change the culture around the, the Hornets in order for us to win those games that we're talking about winning? Well, I think culture is a, a somewhat uh, overused term mm. um, you know in this business uh, you play 82 games and talent over 82 games will normally um, you know sh show its its head in other words if your talent is good enough you know you're gonna win more games than you did the year before mm. um, in college if you have you know a different coach you know, then maybe the coach over 25 or 30 games could be smart enough to win three or four games and that makes a difference uh, not not so much you know at this level so really it's it's upon me and my staff to you know, in, increase the talent level of this team uh, so that over an 82 game season you know we, we could consistently win <coughs> you know, of course stay healthy you know those kinds of things um, ma making a change you know in our coaching staff you know to some degree is changing the culture uh, because you know he runs the locker room uh, the plane, the bus, the practice area, <coughs> and, and that, and that's really where the group bonds. They, they become one. So it's up to it's up to the coach to do that. But I've got to bring in the talent. And uh, when you change a coach, you know you do change culture to some degree. Mm -hmm. The 30th anniversary season of our Hornets and opening night is going to be on Wednesday, October 17th. We're going to be playing the Milwaukee Bucks, but. Fans are going to get a chance to see our Hornets in action before that with the Purple and Teal scrimmage that's going to be on Saturday, October 6th at noon at the Spectrum Center. What can fans expect with that? Well, I'm sitting here today with Fred Whitfield. Fred! <laughs> Hi, Fred! Fred, our friend, Fred! <laughs> He's known forever here in Charlotte, and uh, I've known Fred for a real long time, and I'm really happy to be able to work with him. Uh, but but I, I will let Fred talk a little bit about that, but it is an open scrimmage, and my understanding is uh, if you have a ticket and tickets are free, you, you, you could come and watch the Hornets scrimmage. Yeah, the, 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 the scrimmage is really exciting, and our new coach, Mitch, uh, failed to mention Coach James Borrego, who uh, I watched Mitch go through an exhaustive uh, search for a great young coach, uh, and we're excited to have him on board. and. Uh, he, for the first time in years, has, has agreed to do an open scrimmage. And so our fans will get a chance to see uh, an in intra-squad game, uh, get to see our players run up and down the court and play in this new style that Mitch is talking about. And the tickets are free, but you'll need to download our Hornets app and claim your four tickets. You can get up to four tickets on the app. Uh, we expect a big crowd. Uh, there hasn't been this much excitement around our organization in a lot of years. I'm going into my 13th season here. And uh, to, to see the changes that Mitch, positive changes that Mitch has made on the basketball side, 
It's something that, that has our fans excited as well as everybody else in the organization. Uh, Fred, I could tell you the last time I remember Hornets scrimmage because I'm an avid Hornets fan. When y'all brought Master P here, <laughs> back in the day, it was about 15,000 people at the scrimmage. I was one of them because, I, you know, I'm, I'm Team P. So I was, it was crazy, though. So, you know, for the Hornets to have a, a scrimmage is really big for the city. The city is going to come out. They're going to love it. But also coming to the city is the All-Star Game this year. It, it is. And we're excited and thrilled that uh, Commissioner Silver uh, re-awarded us the All-Star Game. And we're deep in the preparation. Uh, to really put our city on the global stage. And it comes during the time that we're celebrating the 30th anniversary of our Hornets franchise. And uh, it dates back to those Master P screens. Uh! Uh, but, but it's just an exciting time around our organization. Uh, the NBA is excited to come here and showcase their premier event. Uh, our city has been a great partner to work with. And uh, we're excited about you know our part-time workers that will be able to reap the benefits of All-Star Game coming in the hotels and restaurants, and we want to do everything we can to be an economic stimulator. And fortunately, the league wants to partner with us for, for a huge event that will be here in February. We are definitely excited about the All-Star Game. Before we were talking about that, you made a mention about Mitch making the decision to uh, having a tough decision and really looking for a good coach for our Hornets. Now, Mitch, when you came on board, a lot of people were like, dang. Mitch fired everybody. Mitch fired everybody. Mitch fired everybody. <laughs> Mitch Mitch making Mitch all house. these Donald changes. Uh, Fred, <laughs> oh, Mitch. Fred, you here. Uh, Mike, Mike, you still here. Everybody else is fired. Mitch, well, my, question you doing, to you. Uh, Mitch Kupchak, you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> my question to you is, in all of those decisions that you made in, in looking for a coach, what exactly was it that you were looking for to make that decision? Well, the coach, is that, that was, the coach that was here is a good coach. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, in our business, the coaches kind of run their course. Um, if you're fortunate as a coach, you'll, you'll be somewhere for five or six years, and that's a really, really good run in this business. Um, the reality is, is every four or five years, a coaching change is probably necessary unless you're a, you know, a Popovich or a Phil Jackson you know, or a Pat Riley. Um, and, and when I got here, you know, the feeling was it was time to make a coaching change. And uh, our, our coach from last year, Steve Clifford, landed on his feet. He's, he's now the head coach um, in um, Orlando, and I'm happy for him. Mm -hmm. He's a good coach, mm -hmm. and he's a good man. And we did make a lot of changes, you know, close to, um, close to 30, mm -hmm. you know, basketball operation-wise. Uh, and um, once again, a lot of them were good people. Uh, but a change was necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to um, change the style of play. Mm -hmm. And um, that's not to say the way that uh, Coach Clifford was coaching was not the right way to play, mm -hmm. but we wanted to make a change, change the style of play. Um, and in doing so, you know, we had to find the right coach. And we ended up interviewing close to uh, 12 candidates in person and of course each interview go, can, can go from four to eight hours in wow. length and uh, we Skyped you know several more so it was an exhausting uh, process you know as soon as I got here which lasted about a month and it was to some degree overwhelming because of all the changes and then when you make changes you have to hire people to replace those people mm -hmm. and once again you just don't interview one person you interview four or five or six mm -hmm. So you can imagine, you know, all the uh, all that was on the table when you made 25 to 30 changes a year, um, or, or this year. Um, but with with Coach Borrego, um, we brought him in uh, from San Antonio. Worked for Coach Popovich. Left San Antonio. Went to New Orleans as an assistant. Went to Orlando as an assistant. Ended up getting 30 games head coaching experience in Orlando. Uh, then went back to San Antonio. Michael Jordan, we just learned that Michael Jordan made a, a great contribution to the relief efforts for Hurricane Florence. And there's something that the Hornets are also doing. Uh, can you go into that and explain to us what's going on with those efforts? Yeah, once again, I'll pass the baton to, to Fred uh, Whitfield here to my right. But Michael is coming into town tomorrow, and uh, the Hornets are planning a, a huge event uh, to, show, to show support. Uh, there is such a connection between this organization and the state of North Carolina that goes mm -hmm. beyond, you know, the city of Charlotte. And, um, you know, tomorrow is going to be a big day, and, you know, we're hopeful that we can do a lot of good, you know, for all the bad that's taken place in the last 10 days or so in the state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and uh, Mitch is exactly right. Uh, you know, Michael, having grown up here in, uh, in, in North Carolina and in Wilmington, mm -hmm. which was devastated by mm -hmm. the hurricane, right. he was obviously very touched. 
by that, Mitch played at uh, University of North Carolina. Buzz Peterson played at University of North Carolina, mm -hmm. our assistant GM. And, uh, you know, we as an organization take a lot of pride in giving back to the community, but, and, and all of that is led by Michael. And uh, his $2 million donation on Tuesday uh, to the relief fund, a million dollars going to the American Red Cross, another million going to the Foundation for the Carolinas. Those funds will go directly uh, to, to help victims of the hurricane. But tomorrow, our, our entire organization will be focused on Second Harvest Food Bank mm -hmm. and, and putting together 5,000 food care packages that will be shipped to the Fayetteville area, Myrtle Beach area, and also the Wilmington area to help those families in need. They're in need of food right now, and so we're partnering with Food Lion, who's been a phenomenal partner of ours, and we're going to be rolling our sleeves up and putting those packages together. And uh, as an organization, we'll have our players there, our coaches there, Mitch and his staff will be there and our business operations staff will be there as a unified organization led by our owner to try and do everything we can to help these, these victims of a, a horrible hurricane. Uh, Frank, what can we do as a community um, to come out and help? Well, what, what you can do is just look at our website, uh, Hornets.com, and uh, there are five organizations that are giving funds directly to these victims, and, uh, and also you can go out and buy a Carolina Strong T-shirt, mm. which uh, our organization is working with Fanatics, our partner, in the retail space and the NBA, some really cool T-shirts that uh, that the, the proceeds from the, the sale of the T-shirts will also go to the hurricane victims. But Hornets.com will tell you everything you need to know, and uh, we, we love it that our fans are already jumping in and assisting us in this effort. That's what's up. And uh, Mitch, we just want to officially welcome you to Charlotte. <laughs> came, you came to us from the Lakers, right? I did. I was yeah. in Los Angeles for over 30 years mm -hmm. you know, as a player and then somebody in the front office. So... Um, Little did I think, thirty something years later, you know, the place where I went to college and had such great memories and such great friends, mm -hmm. you know, and of course Michael is somebody I met a long time ago. Little did I know I'd be back here um, working for the Charlotte Hornets, you know, over 35 years later. It's exciting to me. I'm looking forward to the season next year. What was it like going in and tell Mike, "Hey, Mike, I'm about to fire everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to fire everybody." What was that like? I just want to know, like, what was that like to tell Mike that? You know, he was, <laughs> uh, obviously he's on board, he, he's entrusted, you know, the basketball side of the franchise to me. Um, the thing about Michael, you know, this, this franchise has had some success, but it's never had con consistent and uh, sustained success. He, as everybody knows, you know, him as a great player, and what made him a great player? Well, he did have some gifts, you know, okay, that God gave him. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that, that makes him really, really special is his competitive nature. Mm -hmm. You know, he hates to lose and he wants to win. He feels indebted to this state and this city. And if they don't win, it really tears at him. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I think he recognized that, you know, change needed to take place for the reasons we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's just necessary and he's completely on board. That's what's well, up. Since training camp is uh, next week, uh, I think they, I got an email the other day that said we're going to have trials down at um, yeah. Freedom Park. Yeah, <laughs> Mitch, I still got a crossover left them in that. You know what I mean? Do, Mitch. Do, I can do, Mitch. Mitch. Tell, them, tell Mitch, them now. Mitch, I can, I can, I can play in this, this inter-squad, <laughs> this inter-screamers <laughs> game, me and Burpee. We I, still, got a, I got a mean floater. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> mean I still got that cross. Ask Kim, but he know about this crossover. Hey, real quick. I just, <laughs> really, real quick. I just want to know, Fred, maybe you know the answer to this. We just got word that they're gonna be, there's going to be a sequel to Space Jam. Do you know if Michael's going to be making an appearance in this movie? I do not have the answer for that. <laughs> <laughs> tried it. I had to try it. I had to try it. Our 30th anniversary of our Charlotte Hornets. Um, like we said earlier, opening night is going to be Wednesday, October 17th, 7 p.m., Milwaukee Bucks, um, and then our The Purple and Teal Scrimmage, Saturday, October 6th at noon at the Spectrum Center. All of the information is on Hornets.com, especially about this hurricane relief, which um, is going to take place tomorrow. And you all have a goal of 5,000 boxes. Yes, we do. So you all can help out there. Hornets.com to get all of that information. Thank you, Mitch. Thank you, Fred. We, we Thank always you. appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I do got that crossover. So I need to send out my resume. October 6th. October 6th. I'm, I'm going to be ready about it. And I'll be you don't need to. You know the express and keep your day job. <laughs> 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 You're welcome to try 